Hello everyone, welcome to Slice and Dice with Derek Dies. Very easy to pronounce that one. Slice and Dice is one of my favorite games. Um, and I think that it's probably a good idea to do a dice game, given that my name is Derek Dies. Of course. So, I'm just going to jump straight into hard, and I'm going to try to explain things. Hopefully people can understand what's going on. So in this game, if you ever played Yahtzee, you have five different characters, as you can see here. Um, and they all have their own dice. And during our turn, we're going to be able to roll all those dice and lock them in and try to fight against enemies who also have their own dice. Here in hard mode, we're going to select some modifiers to make the game more difficult. So... We have Wanted, which means that our left side can only be used once each battle. Fight 14 Curse. So before Fight 14, we'll choose a Tier 8 Curse. Flighty is going to make damage monsters move back. So then we can only attack monsters in the front. And Monster Right to Power of 1 is going to add all monsters one extra pip to their rightmost side. So you see this one's a 1 damage cleave. Hits 3 targets. So that will turn into 2 damage. This is a 2 damage to the top and bottom so what I think I want is actually I'm going to take one hmm and I'm not sure about wanted because wanted seems pretty gnarly because I wanted better items because it sounds fun but I don't think it's worth it let's just go for that okay so as you can see we have a bunch of different dice here and I can click on them to lock them in and now I know that that character will be activating this dice um, this one has a pretty gnarly downside makes it so that it uh, all sides become blank next turn but I think this might actually be enough to just take out oh right the <laughs> damage enemies move back okay so we need probably a little bit more damage here all right let's hit you for one you for three and now if we take out this boar this goblin has the effect that it flees if it's alone kill the boar the goblin runs away okay so I have a choice between two characters here this soldier does pretty fundamental damage a nice little upgrade to the lazy uh, much more consistent and the pilgrim has a couple of really neat asides this one adds self-shield to target side this turn, so whatever effect it does is also going to shield themselves for that much. It can also make it so that an ally cannot die this turn. This makes it so that it stuns enemies with equal less HP, and this allows a hero to use their dice again. So, well, we also have a choice for a random level 2 level up. So, when a character dies in this game, all that happens is they're eliminated for the fight, but they'll be back next round with half health. So, dying isn't that bad, but, you know, not dying is also good. Here, I'm going to go for the soldier, because I think that, this is, that just getting good fundamental damage is really important in this game. Alright. So as you can see, we're getting two death sides on these. So then these bees are going to destroy themselves, but in the process also deal four damage. So that's pretty rough. What we're going to do here, I'm just going to use this. This will dodge all damage and enemy effects this turn, so that way it, the bee will not affect this one. Um, let's, we can also stun this wolf. Uh, let's see. Yeah, two damage guilt. That's really nice. Two damage, I can take out one of the bees. Um, and a one damage hit. Okay, if I... Okay, it can't stun that wolf. But if I hit you... Oh. Okay, fair enough. If I hit you, then you move back. So. What I want to do here is I want to actually get a shield side on this defender. There we go. Perfect. So. Let's go ahead and hit you. And now these bees are going to destroy themselves. And I can save a health there. Nice. Alright. 
All right, this guy's pretty funny. Uh, it does two damage, and then the hoarder instantly dies. So, sure is a way to do it. But yeah, now we're just looking for some damage, and it'll be pretty clean to take out the rest of this one. This one will deal two damage to himself as well as to the enemy. All right. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this one. Uh, it's two damage cruel, so it does double damage to enemies on half or less HP. This wolf has four HP, so this hit will deal six, uh, four damage to it for a total of six damage on it, killing it. All right, we have two options here. Courage potion adds potions and plus three pips to their left side, and the potion will discard their left, um, will discard this item permanently when it is used. So that can be good. Uh, for example, I can put it on the loss. This would turn this to a four damage range poison, and it'll deal four and block one damage at the end of every turn. Uh, of course, the item can only be used once, and it's gone forever. We also have reagents. They place the two right sides with blink and heal one regen, which will then let them heal for one at the end of every turn. I'm gonna take the courage potion, but and now I'm able to equip it to any of my characters, as you can see. But I'm gonna choose to save it until I'm at a much more scary fight. Okay, going get some rats and archers. So we are looking to hopefully kill off this rat in a single hit. Now I have a 1-3 chance of getting it, but it's unlikely I'm going to roll two shields in a row. I'm going to let the lost dodge here. And actually, we can save in this 2 damage attack, but I want to roll. Ah, crud. Okay, come on, damage. Yeah. There we go. Take you out. And let's kill off that one. And shield the hoarder. Alright. So should be pretty easy to take out the rest of these here. Yep. That would do it. Right. Alright. So as you can see, we have a Scrapper. This one does plus one damage to each shield they have. And then we have a Monk, which redirects all damage and effects from an ally to themselves and shields them for three. This one does shield one repel, so it shields an ally for one and then deals one damage as well to every enemy targeting them. This also cleanse, which can get rid of negative status effects, um, which we'll see more of as we go along. Because I have two um, characters that are gray and can shield, I'll be taking the Scrapper. Alright. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay. We'll take this one damage steal, and then we're going to take this to shield the Scrapper and do extra damage. Uh, it would definitely be nice to block the loss while we're at it. So, let's just do that. And let's see if we can't find maybe the poison side. I, I feel like risking it. There we go. Excellent. So, that will deal one damage every single turn. Thus, negating the regeneration of one health every single turn as well. Okay. There we go. We're barely scathed by that attack. Alright. Now, we're getting two poison on the three middle heroes. Which is going to be really rough. But... Let's see how well we can handle that. Right now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 damage. So we need 2 more. Hmm. <sighs> okay, I'm going to unlock those sides. I'm going to roll looking for all the damage I can get. Fortunately, these sides didn't really change. And now I don't really want to risk it anymore. I might just let my loss die. And just kind of call it there. Um, I suppose I can unlock my defender then and roll them once. See if I can't get a damage side. Ooh, I get my damage side. So I managed to keep everyone alive. Because you see, that'll be just enough damage to take out the troll. But I was fully ready for my loss to die. So I could, you know, win the fight a bit more easily. I don't want to reload the class of loss because their damage is really nice. Okay. So I have two options here. Autumn Leaf will add growth to the rightmost side. So every time that side is used, it'll get plus one pip this fight. 
this one will replace the top and bottom attacks that deal one damage and cantrip. So every time I roll it, it immediately activates. So I don't really have any right size I want to be activating over and over again. The shield too, not really impressive, not what I'm looking for. So I suppose it's either the twin daggers or a random item. I do like the idea of the twin daggers. It seems like it could be pretty good. So let's go for it. Hmm. These are pretty weak sides, so I don't really mind replacing them. Okay. Okay. Well, the militia has a special effect of if an ally, if an enemy it's targeting gets plus five shields, it flees. So if we can get enough shields on to our soldier, that could be really good. I think I want to take my wallop and maybe stun the goblin or the blind. Uh, so I don't really need to dodge because I know I can like stun this goblin. All right. Uh, let's take those. Okay. Looks like, unfortunately, we're not going to be getting too much um, block here. Something we can do here, though, is just defend our soldier. And then this blind will flee if no damage is done to any mon to any enemies. So we're not going to use either of our damage sides there. And then the blind is just going to run away. Great. And now if we just block one of these characters for five, then the militia can flee as well. So we need to block the wallop. So we want the wallop to shield himself. That's two more block, and we need one more blocking side, and then we can really style on them. There we go. And they both just run away. That was a complete pacifist run. Very nice. There were some pretty interesting options here. We have the juggler. So this juggler has a bunch of cantrip sides. So every time you just keep rolling, you just keep getting more and more little chunks of damage. But then we also have the warden, who has just bigger shield sides. So as exciting as the juggler is, I think I want to take the warden here. Because the big shields will synergize really well with the scrapper. Okay. And here... I'm going to replace the Loth sides because I don't mind them rolling for their poison and their cruel to damage. All right. Hmm. I kind of want like a big shield for my wallop. That way the militia will run away. So one damage in the shield can also take out one hit from the slate because all of the slate's damage must be removed individually. All right, let's go ahead and roll. Okay, I'm gonna take this poison hit. That'll be very good against the uh, slate. All right, and that makes the uh, militia run away. And now the slate's trying to escape, so They'll try to flee if they think the game is hopeless and there's no gameplay benefit either way. So we're just going to let them run away. This is a suggest This is a modifier the game is offering me that will make it so that all heroes and monsters cannot die on the first turn of the combat. I think that's not bad, but I do like killing off my enemies. And I have a very offense-heavy team here, so I'm going to decline this. Alright, we have two options here. The Pocket Phylactery. Adds pain to the two left sides, so then whenever those left sides are activated, they're just going to take that much damage. And it'll give that character plus 6 max HP. You also have the short sword, replace the two right sides with two damage. Hmm. I mean, getting the two right sides two damage will make my scrapper very consistent. I think that's good. I do like consistency. Just like, you know... These enemies aren't so strong yet to get super lucky to beat them. As long as you're lucky enough, you're good. Alright. So, wait, this is Bloodlust. And it does plus one pip of damage for every damaged enemy. Alright. 
And we're looking to be pretty aggressive here because I want to take out this War Chief because while it's alive, it gives plus one pip to all monsters. So that's pretty scary. And as you can see, that's a lot of poison coming out. And now, this is a four damage bloodless side, so that can just take out the War Chief, severely weakening the snakes. Okay. And now it should be pretty easy to get rid of both of these. And I think that'll do it. There we go. Okay. We have the ninja. Copycat. Copies the keywords from the previous dice he used this turn. So I guess that could be like steel or poison, I guess. But I don't think either of those are so impressive that I really want to go for ninja. We also have the Bard, which has a 1 damage cantrip side, shield 1 to all allies, shield 1 cantrip, and gain 1 reroll cantrip. So this could potentially let us reroll like just over and over and over. It also has a spell effect. So this allows me to spend a resource, in this case 1 blink side of dice, to shield 1 to an ally and cleanse a debuff. I think here I'm going to take the random level up because I want like big shields. I want big damage and neither of these guys do that. We get the rogue, so I'm happy with doing that. So the rogue has one damage poison, one damage cantrip, and a two damage cruel side as, long, as well as a dodge. So that's just more damage than the alternative. So I'm pretty happy with that. All right. Hmm. It's going to be kind of hard to use this but I suppose it's not bad in the, t the soldier because it's kind of like converting the two damage into two damage I can also put it on the warden because that will let them kind of just focus on their shields and I can just r happily roll past their daggers when they roll them all right we can probably make this bloodlust work yeah it's a bit rough though uh definitely don't mind stunning someone. So this is the sarcophagus. It'll flee at the end of turn three and then drop an item if defeated. So I actually want to really kill this guy off. So maybe I just roll this and look for damage. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to keep digging for some damage. Didn't find as much as I wanted. Oof, right. These guys are going to move back, so we do actually want to kill off the gnolls. Okay. Yeah, if these guys didn't move back, it would make my life a lot easier, huh? Uh, let's kill you off so you don't make my soldier almost dead now it'll be quite the challenge to kill a sarcophagus i have two turns to do it it should be possible just difficult okay that's a good start let's roll this all right more damage always good uh the wallop saving yourself and doing some damage there is great Okay, we almost got the sarcophagus out, so it should be pretty trivial to take them out on the next turn. So they're going to run away, as you can see with them flashing. So, yep, we just need to kill them now, and I think that we got it. Nice. So our free random item is... Erythrosit. Sure. And we get our choice between Cracked Plate, which is minus 4 max HP. And the start of each turn, Self Shield 4. And Whiskers, replace the 3 right sides with a bunch of copycat sides. Oh, that Cracked Plate seems really nice. Putting this straight in the Scrapper, and now my shields will be massive on them. So that'll just keep giving them damage. And here... I'm going to put this on the Warden, so this becomes a 10 shield side. So we get the huge scrapper. Big scrapper. Okay. So. Hmm. That's a really, real big block. 
Okay, we're gonna take the big block. We're gonna look for the scrappers. There we go. We got the steel side, which is buffed by how much shields it has. So we're going to give this guy a huge amount of shield, making the militant run away. Slam that one into nothingness and take out our remaining enemies. Ooh. Okay. And here we have a parry, which will let us convert two damage into three shields. And we have the guardian, which has shield three engage, which does double shielding against targets with full HP. So this could be a six, a big six shield, not just cleaving shield and cleaving attacks, which will hit three targets. So the target and then it's two adjacent targets. Uh, we can also take the random level up. This is also a steal, so we could also synergize with more shields. Hmm. I have a tough choice. I think I kind of want the more consistent damage of the cleave instead of the exert. I'm not really a big fan of exert. I like the parry, but I think I like the guardian more. Okay. So we're going against some carriers. So the carriers start with two poison. All right. So we definitely want the shield side. So let's see if we can find it. There we go, big shield. All right, let's reboot both of those. And there we go. And that should take out an enemy in one hit. Very nice. Very clean. Okay. Alright, so unfortunately this character doesn't really have... Like, we don't have any healing on this team, so it'll be very difficult to deal with poison. But I think we can just take our enemies here. There we go. We have Cracked Wheel, which makes it so that we can no longer reroll the sides of that character's dice. But we get plus one reroll, which lets us reroll everyone else's. That sounds pretty good on the soldier. We also have the polished emerald, which copies the effect of all tier two to four items. That would be the short sword, the cracked plate, the twin daggers. Yeah, it would be all three of these items at once. That sounds actually pretty interesting, but hmm. The copy on the guardian would kind of suck because the twin daggers wouldn't be very useful on them. Or maybe they're not just don't equip the twin daggers, they just have the short sword and cracked. Uh, okay, I talked myself into the cracked wheel. Let's put the cracked wheel on the soldier because I'm pretty happy with all of their sides. And then we'll have much more flexibility for our other characters. Okay. So, as you'll see, some of the characters have special health symbols which you might have seen before but this one when you get rid of it then the enemy will be stunned for this turn not activating their effect all right let's take this big shield and let's go ahead and roll looking for shield side we have three re rolls which is really nice should make it pretty probable we find it uh, we have one roll left so you either take the three damage or you can roll looking for bigger damage. And I think that's worth the gamble because the alternative is like a two damage side, which isn't a whole lot better or isn't a whole lot worse. I mean, and well, we did get the worst outcome, but so be it. But we can at least stun the whiz. And yeah, these fanatics do a bunch of pain damage. So they just kind of, you know, destroy themselves over time. So it really isn't that bad. All right. We can take up the whiz like that. And as long as we survive, we're pretty much good. And yeah, Phanax is going to take itself out. Ooh, we get the veteran, which is like an even bigger version of the soldier. Just plus one to all sides. Honestly, it doesn't seem bad. We also get the rogue. The rogue has the six damage side on the left. Um... 
well, I think it's technically three, and then plus three because it's pristine. They have when they have full health. This is two damage and gets to be used twice, kind of like this four damage on here. This is one damage to all enemies. It's pretty exciting, but big generic number. That seems actually really good. And then we can just slap this on, and we're happy with any of those sides. Now, that that kind of lets us guarantee we have a good target for Cracked Wheel in the late game because we're not going to get any characters above level 3 without some shenanigans. And um, in case you're not aware of Slice and Dice, Slice and Dice is full of shenanigans. Like, I I'm talking characters who are like tier 5 instead of tier 3, items going well above the fight, like, quality of fight limits. Um, there's all kinds of like broken fun stuff in in this game which we will get to see if you know people have interest in this game and want to see more of it all right well let's give this guy 23 shields against this 24 health uh, 23 health rotten and kaboom <laughs> Okay, well, as fun as that was, I, I do actually want to keep my rogue alive. So, I'm going to roll this rogue one more time. Hey, you know what? That keeps them alive. Okay, now I have no guilt. Alright. <laughs> hilarious, hilarious. Should be pretty easy to take them out from here. Okay. Uh, in case you're kind of lost what's happening, their bones do one damage to adjacent enemies when they die. So we have the kite shield, which sets all shield sides to three. Which, uh, there aren't really many low shield sides on my board, so don't really think I need that. And we have the idol of Kurtzkutz, which gives plus one max HP for each consonant in their name. Hmm, that can be a lot of health. Okay, let's take the idol of curse because it's good. Um, we could probably put that on the scrap. Mm, that gives it scrap for six health. Gives you four. Gives you four. Gives you two. Gives you four. Okay, put it on the scrapper. Give them six health, which uh, is great. You can put this on the guardian, making them much more consistent. And also, we can just roll their cantrip guilt free. Okay. We're probably also looking for a really good left side for those boss battles. Alright. Let's go ahead and reroll here. We want to get our big combo off with the big damage. Ooh. Unfortunate we didn't really find uh, either of their combo pieces. The shield, the big shield or the big swing with the shield. But all these sides suck, so I'm going to do a full reroll. Okay, good enough. Hmm. Well, here. That gets the alpha down to two life, which is nice. And we only take two damage. So, honestly, really nice turn. Alright, and this alpha will now try to summon a wolf. Now, this is kind of the reason I wanted to take them out. Because I'm not really a fan of um, having to deal with that. Okay. We got a huge shield. And sadly, we still didn't get the combo. Okay. Spiker's trying to escape. Get out of here. Alright. So we can either go for the Stalwart, who has some clan, some shields, and a big damage exert side. Or the Assassin, who has a big cruel side that can be like an 8 damage attack, ranged engage, it's a 4 damage attack, it's 2 damage over time. I'm going to go for the Stalwart, because I actually really want this cleanse. Um, we don't have any other access to getting rid of... Um, get, getting rid of debuffs, so... Doing that sounds really good. Alright, we can take the Guardian health here. Maybe we can... 
Mm. Upgrade their health to 12. And that will make my sh big shield even larger. Which should be pretty relevant against these like 12 health basilisks. Okay. I don't think we really want twin daggers because against basilisks, is this going to turn the attacking side to stone? So it's just going to do one damage once and then burn out. So I don't really want that. Okay. Let's get started here. All right. There we go. We got a big shield. There's a two damage, uh, two shield double use, so that can put out a huge shield on the scrapper, letting us do more damage. Okay. Do I want the scrapper or the rogue to dodge? I think I'd rather make them do some damage. Okay. Let's see. That's a 13 damage hit. These guys have 12 health, so that takes one of you out. Kaboom. Okay, uh, let's shield up this rogue and actually no, let's shield up the guardian because the guardian has the flesh side, which uh, keys off of their health. All right. You get a five damage exert side, so that can probably just take out the basilisk here. Okay. I'm pretty happy with these dice it could be better it could be worse but it is enough to win so you know i guess that's what matters huh all right we have some pretty interesting sides here the pocket mirror copies the leftmost side onto the rightmost side which could be really good with the courage potion for, the late, for like a late game swing the mushroom adds decay and plus one pip to all sides uh decay is the opposite of growth it makes that side do one less pip for the rest of the game Okay. That's really interesting. Hmm. I'm not really sure what to take here. I'm like, temp like I don't really want the two random tier four items because I feel like they're just going to be worse than the alternative, right? Um, I'm thinking between mushroom and pocket mirror, but mushroom doesn't do a whole lot for my build because my build is just such big numbers. I think I'm just going to take the pocket mirror. And let's go ahead and copy up this. Uh, let's copy up this damage so we get two cruel sites instead of having the dodge. I'm making it okay use the dodge, but I think it's probably okay to do that. Let's also get the stalwart some da one damage counter trips. That'll be very nice against these slates. Okay. Big shields, hmm, some bloodlust, but yeah, let's reroll all of these. We're looking for the cantrip sides because that helps us take out those slates. Uh, okay. Do I take this shield to engage, or do I roll for the ridiculous huge shield? Ah, I want to roll for the ridiculous huge shield. Let's go. Okay. Let's keep this, because I'd rather not completely whiff. And let's keep this. Maybe and we can probably take out the war sheep with that. Okay. We get one more roll here. See if we can't get a little bit of damage. That's fine. Okay. Takes out the war sheep pretty cleanly, but we could also just... Uh, I believe... Oh, wait. That's not a, that's not a militant. So yeah, we take you out. We'll take you out. And yeah, just get some blocks all around. And now we just need to keep on throwing out some chip damage to take out these slates. Should be pretty clean from here. Okay. I mean, all damage is the same now, so. No reason to be too picky. Killed five slates. I unlock a monster. All right. So we can upgrade this brawl, the scrapper to a brawler, who has 
2 damage Rampage, which lets them reuse the side if it was lethal. Which can be really good against a lot of small enemies. We also have the Sharp Shot, which can kill an enemy with 6 or less HP, which, you know, pretty good against uh, Slates, at the very least. Or getting a random tier 3 level up. I'm going to go for the Sharp Shot. It's also a really good target to duplicate this side. Okay. So that'll help us get rid of these nasty slates we keep running into. Alright. Feeling really good about having that big silly shield side. Uh, slam side. This enemy has 20 health. So we can roll that. Oof, almost thought we had it. Okay. If we can roll that um flesh side, that'd be good. Alright. Well, now I'm just hoping to roll anything. Uh, go. It comes around, you know. We can hit you and actually just take you out. All right, I think that's really good because that, that was a lot of poison coming out. Feels good to take them out in the first turn. Okay. So yeah, we can just kind of hard roll looking for uh, the assassinate side. And if we can't find it, we can, I guess, get some cantrips out. Yep. And now they should run away. Get out of here. Ooh. Serration as vulnerable to the top and bottom sides. With... The one damage with the steel sides at the top and bottom, that that's going to get insane. Alright, let's go for it. So now they're going to take plus one damage. Um, their plus damage equal to the amount of pips on this. So that means that like you know, with a 20 damage attack, then now all attacks to that target are going to deal 20 extra damage. Jeez, jeez, jeez. Okay. Hmm. And, yeah, I don't think I really want to throw anything else out here. Okay. So, six damage. I guess that'd be good. Or, like, you know, the, either of those. I do want the upgraded side. And I don't really want the five damage exert. So, full reroll here. Okay. Get that. Uh, I think I can get away with another roll here, but I might be getting greedy. Okay, I'm going to lock that in. Oof. Okay. Punish on the scrapper there, but the reward is just so high that it's like I don't want to turn it down, you know? And do I want to exhaust my Star Wars? I think that's fine. Yeah, because that's just so much damage. And now we just need, uh, see, this and that takes them out pretty handily. And now it should be pretty trivial to take out this Basilisk. Um, I definitely could have, like, rerolled the Sharp Shot to do a little bit more damage, but honestly, it's like, eh, we're fine. There we go. All right. So we have the captain, which is three damage focus times two of the target was the target of the previous dice this turn. The prince. All right, and they also have formation with three damage si pips and three shield pips. They'll do two damage to all enemies and then two shield shield two to all allies. That sounds really fun. Uh, we have the prince, which with one damage shield heal and blank side. It'll deal 15 damage to a target. Also sounds pretty fun. Ah. I was like... Gonna just take the captain here. Or like, not the captain. The, uh... The prince. Because I didn't want to replace my scrapper. But this is, just seems so exciting. Right? 
Because we have shield size, we have damage size, we can use formation. And uh, these aren't bad either. Just like the shield and the cleave and everything. Mm. Ah. I don't have any healing either, so this is never going to be used. I really want these vulnerable scrap sides, so I'm going to go to the prince and i might end up skipping a level up on the scrapper because this vulnerable seal side is just so incredibly powerful for us okay uh yep we can make our sharp shot have plus seven health so that's pretty good uh yeah i think i'm happy with that let's go ahead and roll All right. Ooh, two damage ranged. I do want the six damage range and we can take out the boys. This can just straight up take out a zombie, which is nice. Now, this also like punishes using abilities, but fortunately we don't really care about that. And hey, we can actually use Unite. Um, I just takes you, you out. And we can take you out. You know what? I like that turn. And it works out. It shouldn't be too bad to take out these enemies now. We just need a big hit. There we go. Alright. The collar. Copycat to both top and bottom sides. So, what can that do for us? It can make these ranged. It can make it so that other sides get shield and vulnerable. Or a second heart, plus one HP per, per HP. So, right, on this character, I can make this into a 34 health character with a 34 shield. That's pretty funny. Uh, they're both hilarious. Um, I don't think I need two shields. So, actually, I'm going to take second heart because I want to go for this. This sounds so funny. So, we can double your health and then make this to a 22 health item uh put that there okay so that is everyone kind of upgraded so i suppose uh for our last battle we're gonna upgrade this to a six damage inspired and then uh inspired will let it double if the previously used dice was higher this turn and then like we get a huge shield and then this does 12 damage which isn't terrible but we'll save that for the last fight all right there we go. Very healthy stalwart. And yeah, we get the shield side immediately. Okay. Uh, let's roll. There we go. Be a nice six damage hit from this. We could also use this for a four damage attack. Because it'll all be also be inspired or serrated. So pretty good too. And a nice shield as well. Alright. And I believe with that. Hmm. We can just kinda neatly take out most of them. And yeah. It'll be pretty easy to take out these last two enemies. Okay. Last one. And I'm going to skip here. Because I want to have my top and bottom vulnerable seal sides. We're going up against the hand. Plus one pip to all heroes. So. Let's skip this. Alright. We're going to get our titan. We're going to get our uh, courage potion. To increase our... Uh, sword here. Uh, let's get started. The sabers are pretty scary. They have really big damage sides. Um, this guy is also scary. Seven damage to all enemies on his side is no joke. Okay. Let's get our big side. So that is seven damage, which is a little bit awkward against his eight health currently. But we'll probably be able to do a little bit extra damage to them. Whew. Okay. 
Let's reroll one more time here. Unfortunately, we do not get exactly what we're looking for. How un how sad. Uh, we get a five damage bloodlust side. Take out a saber. Um, shield the sharp shot. Shield the stalwart. All right. So we're kind of in the same spot now, except the scrapper is pretty low on health. Fortunately, I don't think that'll matter too much. The hand will be summoning three sabers. That's scary. So now, if we can just get the serration side, we're basically set. There we go. And, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, zero deaths. Very nice. So, yeah, that was Slice and Dice. That's my third win in a row, apparently. Wait, my third total win. I've lost plenty of times, apparently. I've, I've died. Diced. I've diced. Die, plural. That's the tagline. So, hope you all enjoyed watching. Um, it would be nice to have a dice-themed... Uh, dice-themed theme series going on in this channel and also to give a bit more variety to the backpack battles i love backpack battles of course but if this video gets enough traction um i'll be super happy to make this into a regular thing so you know if you enjoyed uh let me know and i will see you in the next episode